All right. Hey, everybody. So this is going to be the start of the uh, problem, like the live solving sections. This is like the Yusako Bronze Contest 2021 in December. Uh, I'm Chris. I am an ex uh, camper from a few years ago. And right now I go to Princeton to study computer science. And uh, yeah, I teach for Alpha Star. So I guess we can just start the bronze contest now. Okay. All right. And keep in mind for every contest, I'll try to use like techniques in that level. So I'm not going to use any crazy like platinum nonsense for the bronze contests. And I'll stick with bronze stuff for bronze contests and silver stuff for silver contests. And for different levels of contest, I'll rely on knowledge from that level. So if you're a bronze user watching, um, you should be able to follow along with this. Yeah. And um, this will be probably a lot faster than four hours. So, um, and I might move a little bit fast because I've been doing this for like a long time. So like, definitely encourage you to stop the recording, like like take it at your own pace, maybe like refresh some parts if they don't make sense to you, but I'll try to be really clear and like slow down. So yeah, let's just start with the first problem. So the first thing I like to do when I start a contest is just like look at the problems and see if I get a feel for each one. So the first one, lonely photo, you have N cows from three to 10 to the uh, five minutes into the fifth, and each is either a G or an H. So you're gonna get this input string like this in this format. The cows are in a line and farmer John wants to take a photo of every sequence of three or more consecutive cows. Okay, he doesn't want to take a photo in which there is exactly one cow whose breed is guaranteed and exactly, he doesn't want to take a photo in which there is exactly one cow whose breed is guaranteed and exactly one cow whose breed of Holsteins. He reckons the singular cow. Oh, I see, with the isolated self-conscious, okay. So after taking a photo of every sequence of three or more cows, he throws out all these so-called lonely photos in which there's exactly one Holstein or one guarantee. Given this lineup, so how many photos to throw out? Two photos during the start and the discuss. So you want to know how many photos are lonely and every photo is a substring. So for a substring, let's just like review what a substring is real quick. I think it's like this. Um, if you have a string like A, B, C, D, A, F, the substring is like a, I think it's like a sub part of that string. We can actually look up the definition to be safe. Substring definition. Yeah, substrings continue sequence of characters in a string. So yeah, it's like CDA is a substring. Like AB would be a substring. Um, however, maybe looking at uh, like B, oh, sorry, that's the wrong thing. Looking at like BDF is not a substring because that's not cont contiguous, right? So we want to know basically the number of substrings of this string of length three or more so no length one, no length two, but the, but the number of substrings of length, oh, is it was exactly length three? Oh, wait, this is a little bit confusing. Hold on. Um, so here it says like, he's taking photos of every single of three or more consecutive cows. Oh, I see what they're saying. Okay, okay. I see, okay. So basically he's throwing out three subsequences. So you wanna know how many subsequences here are like that, right? So this is the first problem. Seems kind of tricky. Let's look at the second problem. So Farmer John's and cows are particular about the room temperature in the barn. Some cows like the temperature to be on the cooler side, others prefer warm. So, okay, nice. So the stall, the barn contains a sequence of N stalls one through N uh, where N is big. I don't know how big N is. Um, hmm. Oh, I see. So N is 10,000 basically. Um, so there's N stalls, each containing a single cow. The I top refers temperature to be P of I. Right now the temperature is T of I. Okay. So this feels more interesting. He sends command system telling it to raise the temperature and see what cells are Oh, okay. That's cool. All right. How far draw from the ideal, the minimum number of commands needs to send this new air conditioning system so that every cow stalls the ideal temperature for its resident cow? Um, no, number of commands, so it's been one unit. Okay, okay. So this is a weird problem, right? How every cow has like a temperature their stall is at now and a temperature that they want their stall to be. So ideally, so I think the first line is what the, the first line is what the temperature now, we know what they prefer. And then the next line is the temperature. So I guess this one, like it starts at one, two, 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 one and you want it to be one, five, three, three, four. And, uh, yeah, you can send commands like in this format, I guess, to finish solving this. This is an interesting problem. Also seems kind of hard. Let's get the last one. 
Basically, I was trying to walk home for a favorite pastor in the barn. The pastor in the barn and my grid. The, her pastor in the top left corner and the barn in the top bottom right corner. So Bessie wants to go home really quick and she'll only walk down into the right. Okay, so she goes like in this zigzagging pattern. The hay bales are in some locations Bessie cannot walk through. Her walk must go around them. Okay. Bessie's feeling tired and wants to change direction. She walks at most K times. Okay. Huh. How many distinct paths can Bessie walk? Two paths are distinct. Bessie walks in one in a square in one path, but not in the other. All right. Okay. So each case contains T sub cases each describe a different barn and each oh each different farm and each of which must be answered correctly past all sub case. Okay. I see this is a weird problem. You have like T different sub cases that you have to do. Um, each sub case starts with a line containing N and K. So where does N range from? Two to fifty. Then K is from um, one through three. So it changes directions K times. Either each barn is uh, each barn, each character is either dotted on two edges is cable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So it's a square barn. She wants to walk from like here to here. She changes direction at most K times. Okay. So let's, I mean, let's see if I can understand this problem first. So let's look at this example first, three and one. So I can change direction once so I need to get to the bottom. I think there's only two ways to do this, right? You can either, um, let's, let's see. So this is thus the grid like this. Um, you change direction once. So you can either go like, Forward, forward. I guess you can start off in any direction, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, she can only walk down into the right though. So she can't like go around things, like go around them. So if you can change directions three times, uh, one time here, you can either go here, change direction here and then go here, or you can go down and then change direction here and go here. So the answer should be two for this case. And if we look here, it is two. So that's right. Let's do a harder one. Let's do, um. oh, this one's very clearly zero because she's blocked by hay bales. What about, uh, this one's interesting, right? So let's look at this case. So you can change directions three times and your configuration is like this. So let me just do some erasing real quick. So yeah, just, to, just again, uh, I'm gonna go through all the problems and read through the problem statements and kind of just get a feel for them and then pick off the easiest ones first. It's usually how I like to do things because you don't get extra points for solving other problems. They're all worth the same amount of points. So you should just do the easy ones first, right? Oh, I guess it's very clear how this one's impossible because the the hay bales kind of like block your entrance. So no matter what direction you start in, like you can't go through the hay bales. Let's do, this was not that interesting. Uh, let's do a different one. Let's do the last one to see if we understand the problem correctly. Oops, sorry. Just a pen, here it is, okay. So this is a four by four now. Um, so this grid looks like this. Pen's messy, sorry guys. Ah, where did it go? Here it is. Okay. And you can change directions three times. So the hay bales are on the top corner, second to last, and bottom corner. So hay bales are here, here, and then uh, here. So how many paths can Bessie take to get from top to bottom, basically, with three directions changes, right? Hmm. Let's think. So Bessie could either go one, two, wait, so one, two here, three down. Maybe Bessie can go one here, two here, and then three here, and then one here, two here. No, sorry, one here. And two here. So Bessie doesn't need to take three switches. She can take at most K switches. Let's keep in mind. So um, yeah, these are like three pads already, right? She could also do uh, just one switch here, one switch here, maybe one switch here, one switch here, one switch here. Boom, wait, one switch, one switch, one switch. Or once a cheer, once a cheer, once a cheer. So there's like, I think in total, there's like six. There's the path that goes like this. There's this, uh, sorry, I already counted that one. There's this one, 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 and there's this one. 
there should be six pads total. It's kind of really convoluted, but yeah. Yeah, that's the final answer. So, okay, this one also makes sense. Um, so we understand all the problems now. Let's see which one's easiest. So we have this walking problem, which I think is pretty hard. I don't want, I don't want to do this one first. And then we have the uh, lonely photo problem. This one might be a little more doable. And then you have this one here. This one also kind of seems a little bit doable, but I think the easiest one for me is lonely photo. I guess everyone might have their own ideas at this point. So um, feel if you think another problem is easier, like, like that's probably a good thing for you to try. You know, easiness depends on like what you're thinking of personally. So for me, this problem is easier, but for other people it might be different. So let's just look at this problem real quick. For these problems, I think I like to try to do some example cases, get a feel for what's going on first. I like to really just draw. So I'll be using this like scratch pad a lot. Um, don't just like start trying to code right away. You know, get your mind like somewhere where you can like really think about these problems before you start to code. So let's just take a look at this. G, H, G, H, G. Usually I like to use the input, pro, pro, to, the input example to give you, but sometimes the input example is really like low quality and you think it's not interesting. So you can use a different one, but for now the input problem is what I'll use to think about this. So how many segments of this are lonely, right? So I guess there's two kinds of loneliness right now. Let's think there's two kinds of loneliness, right? There's like G lonely and there's H lonely. So a segment is G lonely if there's exactly one guarantee in the segment, right? A segment is H lonely if there are, um, what's it called? If there are exactly one H in the segment. So this is G lonely and not H lonely. Uh, since we only care about segments of length more than three, we, we, this wouldn't even be a valid segment because we want three or more length, I believe. And then, sorry. This segment here is H lonely, but not G lonely, right? I will just kind of define this because in the end of the day, it's easier to focus on like one kind of loneliness and then we'll talk about it. So uh, note that for any, like the amount of segments, right? There's no segment that's both H lonely and G lonely because that would mean it has one H and one G and that means it's length two, right? Which we're not counting. So every segment that we think is bad, we want to count the number of bad, like lonely segments, right? Every lonely segment, this is like a key thing. Every lonely segment is either, there's like two options here, right? G lonely or H lonely. So my writing's a little bit slanted. Let me slant my board this way. So that means if we count the number of G lonely things, count the number of H lonely things, we add them up. That's the total number. That's our total answer, right? So for now, let's focus on H lonely. The G lonely case is the exact same, just with different letters. So it's going to be easy to solve. Let's think about how to, do G lonely. So for now, we'll only focus on where the H's are. Let's say this is our grid. We have like H's interspersed throughout, right? We'll just do a cool configuration of this. All right, and we wanna know how many segments of length three or more in here are H lonely. So how do we calculate this, right? First of all, let's look at, so each of these H's should kind of define like, so if a segment is H lonely, right? It needs to contain exactly one Holstein. So each of these can like, each of these H's has their own like H lonely segments and they don't overlap. So you can't have like this guy and this guy belonging to the same H lonely segment or else it wouldn't be lonely anymore. They'd have each other in the segment. So we can kind of like see, let's ask the crystal question, right? For this guy right here, how many H lonely segments does he have? So there's only one we can see from inspection, right? The only three length segment that includes this cow and only this cow is like this one right here, right? Since there's only one for this guy. Uh, sorry, let me try to get the eraser. For this guy right here, right? Oop, try to get the eraser, sorry. Sorry, here, how many H lonely segments does he have? Actually, he has none. So there's not enough length on this side for him to have any H lonely segments of length three or more. I think there's like a three or more requirement, right? So it's three or more consecutive cows. Okay, cool. For this guy right here, he also has none because there's not enough room. So this tells us a bit about our problem. What? This is giving me some trouble. Sorry, guys. Just 
give back his. All right. So for these guys also, there are no h only segments. So there's only one h only segment in the entire array, kind of, right? Let's look at a more general case, right? Time to count like how many h only segments a cow has. So if we have a cow here, right? And its nearest h neighbors are here and here. You kind of see, okay, here's the amount of space here and the amount of space here, right? You want to know how many length three or more segments start before here and end after this guy, right? Because, um, so for this cow, the question is like, yeah, how many? Let me, is this still not great? H, oh, here. <laughs> Only segments, right? You wonder how many H only segments contain this count only this cow. So the segments all need to be within this range right here and all need to contain this cow basically. So how many H only segments can we make with that? Um, is there a formula for this? Let's say there's like one, two, three, four. There's A spaces on this side and B spaces on this side, right? Um, if that's true, how many segments in total can we make? So the segment needs to start. So there's how many starting points? So there's like a left side and a right side for any segment, right? Like, oh, sorry. My pen is a little bit miscalibrated. Do this. So every segment has a left side and a right side, right? How many possible right, left sides are there? Well. There's A spaces on this side, and you can also start here. So there's like A plus one different right sides, and there's B plus one different left sides, right? Uh, A plus one left sides, B plus one different like starting uh, ending points. So these are the total number. So the total number of segments using things in this range are A plus one my, times B plus one, right? So, What's the caveat here? Well, the caveat is that um, this number includes, so let's just do a quick count real quick. So maybe there's like H, just this, right? So all those total segments that we said are, there should be nine different segments. So you have this one right here, these two of length two, um, length three segments, we have one, two, three, Length four segments, we have two, and then length five, we have one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's an A total. Look, maybe let's hold it clear. Hold on, wait. Let's see if maybe an H, have two more squares here, right? You have another H here, another H here. So our segments, the lonely segments that contain this cow right here, can extend beyond these boundaries and has to stay within this region, right? So how many are there total? Well, by our formula, there should be A plus one times B plus one. A is two, B is two, so there should be nine. There should be nine, right? Is there actually nine? Well, there's one here. There's two length segments like this, right? The three length ones could be this one, this one, or this one. There's two four length ones, and there's a big five length one, right? So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total. So our formula is right. Seems right. What's the issue though? Well, the issue is that we count a bunch of these like one length, two length segments, right? Oh, so we got to subtract out something from it. And it seems like if we have like a long, we want to come up with a formula that's really clean that uses only A and B that tells you the amount of H length segments, right? So how do we do this? So um, you, if A and B are like really long, right? The only one length segment is this one. The only two length segments are these two, right? So you think the answer is like three every time. So it's you think, oh, like the formula to calculate it is A plus one times P plus one, right? Minus three, because you want to subtract out these segments. But that's not really true, I think, because think about this case. What if like A is zero, right? So there's nothing on this side. It's just like H and stuff like that. Well, then there's a one length segment and there's two length segment, right? And there's not like this three here. So it's actually gonna be like, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be, um, I think the actual answer here is if you have an H here, 
and you have an A and you have a B. To calculate the number of like H lonely segments that contain this H right here, right? You have to do A plus one times B plus one, right? There's minus one because you definitely have to subtract out this no matter what, right? And then minus this indicator variable for whether A is greater than zero minus like B is greater than zero, right? So if this, this what this kind of means is that if A is equal to zero, this value to zero. Uh, if A is greater than zero, it evaluates to one, right? And same thing for here. We can also write this as like, if this makes more, if, if that doesn't really make sense to you, think about it like A plus one times B plus one minus one minus max of, or actually this would be min of A and one, this is like minus min of B and one. And you could try to like pause the video and convince yourself why this is true, right? But the idea is here, now we figured out a formula. So how do you turn this into an algorithm, right? So let's say this is like F of A, B. We'll write a function for this, right? So kind of do this in our code, but let's say we have this function F of A, B, right? Now going back, try to count the total number of H only segments, right? This is something that we need to do. How do we extract an A and B for each of the H's here? How do we do that? Well, we can start like with this following thing, right? We want to kind of, we don't want to just for each H, I think we have actually enough time for each H to go out and just for loop and count the number of A's and count the number of B's, right? Because how many total times is this loop, right? Is this going to be, because is this going to be N squared? No, I think it'll actually be O of N because every like H loop, you might loop through a, uh, you might like re-loop through a single region, right? Like this H or this H might both use this region, but this region's only looped through like exactly twice. So the total length, the array, the total time to do this is like two times N. If that doesn't really make sense to you, like at this point, it's totally fine, don't worry about it. It's more of just that me like convincing myself that this algorithm runs on time. But to get A and B, I think an easy way is for every H, you go through, to the right as much as you can, go to the left as much as you can without encountering another H. And then you use this to get A and use this to get B. And then you call F of A, B, and you add it to your answer and you move on to your next H. And then after this, you do this for all the Gs. So that's our algorithm, right? So for, so the algorithm is kind of like this, right? Um, let's, we're trying to go to the, the, the coding page. So now we're thinking we're ready to type up this algorithm. So we'll call this one, what's it called? Oh, wait, we changed this. That's crazy. See, they changed the way this is set up from when I used to do Yusako. So now it's just standard in, standard out, I think. Uh, let me do it. How buffered reader standard in. So you just do a buffered reader. Oh, sorry. Just do a buffered reader with a buffered reader. New input stream reader system in. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is how you do the syntax for buffer reader system in. Okay, okay. Okay, we'll just keep that here. But yeah, okay, let's make a code. So let's do, we'll call this like a, um, problem one dot Java. Let's just do that. Public cast problem one, and then a uh, public static avoid main string args. And then we'll do import java.io.asterisk, import java.util.asterisk. All right, and then we can do, set the input output first, right? So um, I think we'll use scanner actually, because this is, sorry, this is, this is bronze, we use scanner, scanner n equals new scanner. Is this, uh, is this okay to do? Okay, okay, new scanner, new input. I think I could just do some not anything. I think this works. Does that work? Um, and then we'll define like int n, and then we'll do int array input n equals n dot next int, uh, input equals new int array n, and then we'll do for i int i equals zero, i is less than n, i plus plus, uh, input 
of i is equal to in, oh wait, sorry, this is in one line. So string input line is equal to in dot next, I think, yeah. And then for i is less than n is equal to input of i is equal to. So we wanna we don't want to store this as like g's and h's. I think that's a little bit tedious. We'll make the g zero and with the h is one. That should be a lot easier for us to do, right? So input of i is equal to input line dot car at i. So this gives us the actual. Let's just do this first. Actually, let's do char c equals input line dot car at i, and then we'll do this. If c is equal to, we said g's are zeros and h's are ones. So if c is equal to g, oh, sorry, this is a little bit of Python code leaking through else. So if c is equal to g, we should make input of i equal to zero, else input of i is equal to one, right? And then let's kind of go here. So now we have our input read in. So G's are zeros and H's are one. So now let's try to like define like what we want our functions to do, right? So now we want to do this for every one in our array, right? Uh, go to the left as much as possible to get A. Oh no, sorry, to get A. Go to the right as much as possible to get B, right? Ah, call f of a b, and then turn uh, add to answer. And then for now we have to do for the g lonely, right? So for every zero, you kind of do this exact same procedure. Sorry, this is like my codes, like my compiler is like giving me a lot of error messages because it's not correct code. But this is kind of the idea. Oh, we'll just actually do. So it doesn't error out. So this is kind of the idea of what we want to do, right? Ah, oh, sorry, didn't mean to close that. This is what we want our code to kind of do. So let's first do this, right? So for int i equals zero, i is less than n, uh, sorry, i is less than n, i plus plus, right? If input of i is equal to one, um, if input of i is equal to one, now we want to go left as much as possible, right? So for, this is what we'll do for int. So we'll do int a equals zero, int b equals zero, right? For a equals zero, we'll do a is, uh, let me think. So a is how far, like, let's, let's look at it this way, right? So we have our thing, we have an H here, we might or may or may not have an H on this side, we may or may not have an H on this side, right? So A, A is like how far away from this H we are. So what index are we actually representing? This is I, right? This is A. So I think I minus A does the trick, right? Because I minus A will give you the input. So let's say A is one, so we're here. Like if A is one, right? Um, actually, we want to actually look at i minus a minus one because if we're looking at to see if h is equal to zero, we have to check if this is a. so. If this is an h right here. This is the r i right. If we're right next to an h, we want a to be equal to zero. So we want to check basically i minus a minus one. So this is our index right. Uh, additionally, we want to make sure that i minus a minus one is greater than or equal to zero because sometimes we'll run off the edge of this array. So that's what we'll do here. So a equals zero, b equals zero, b equals zero. You have to say uh, our termination condition, right? If input of i minus a minus one, right, is equal to one. So if we run into a Holstein, right? Uh, I guess we have to keep doing this, but we don't run into a Holstein, right? Let's say equal to zero. And i minus a minus one is greater, oh, sorry, greater than or equal to zero. Let me think, I think it's greater than zero. A plus plus. So what does this do? So it kind of loops through, actually, I think this doesn't, um, you don't need anything of the body condition. We'll just do this, right? So this kind of checks. So it loops from A to zero, checks if I minus one minus A is greater than zero. And if it is, then we increment A, right? 
So this will, and then in the input, we have to check if put of i minus a minus one is equal to one. So if that's equal to one, we want to just break out of this loop. So this will eventually set a to be the number of things left. Let's kind of run this an example, right? So let's let's just like run this example, see how this works. So let's say our h is here. Let's say this is i, right? So a starts at so this is the length here. Maybe there's an h right here, right? So first, uh, we see that a is equal to zero. So a a is equal to zero. We check here. So i minus a minus one. Is this greater than zero? Um, if this is greater than zero, we say, okay, now we check, we do a plus plus, or actually, no, if this is greater than zero, we look at this, right? If this is equal to, if there's another Holstein here, we want to break. And if we break, we say equals equal to zero, which is true, right? So this works. Um, and the other case we have to consider, right, is after, if this is not true, so if there's not an H here, then H gets incremented. So A gets incremented, right? So now A is one. Uh, we're looking at this square now. Is this an H, right? If this is an H, then we stop. We say A equals one, we return, right? But if it is an H, then we continue and we do A is equal to two. So now there's two length here that's safe, right? Let's say that uh, maybe the boundary, let's test the boundary conditions. So let's test like, let's say this is the beginning of the array. Let's see if this exits properly. So let's say this is like, the input is actually like g g h, right? So in this input, we want a to be two. I guess i for here would be zero, one, two. I'd be like two, right? So a equals to zero. It checks if i minus a minus one is greater than, I think this is greater than equal to zero, maybe. So it checks if i minus a minus one is greater than or equal to zero. So it looks here, is this greater than or equal to zero? Yeah, it is, so we're good. We do a plus plus, so now a is one. Check is this greater than or equal to zero? It is, we increment one, so then a is two. Is this greater than or equal to zero? No, it's not. So we stop here, we say a is equal to two, and this is correct. So yeah, this is how we get a, and then for b, it's for b equals zero, i plus b plus one, right? Is less than or equal to n minus one, b plus plus. So we kind of do the exact same thing the other order, right? If input of i plus b plus one is equal to one, we break. So now we want to do it here, sorry, answer. So we have int answer equals zero. Answer plus or equal to, I guess we'll do actually so. The answer might be really big for this one, I think. It potentially can get really huge. So use long in Java. So I'll just do long answer equal to zero. Let's do answer plus or equal to f of a, b. What do we say f of a, b was? Well, we said it was a plus one times b plus one minus one minus, right? These two variables, right? min of a1, actually we don't need these like quotes, these are excessive. Oh, this is, sorry, this is math.min, yeah. Math.min of b1. So we add this to answer. And then now we've calculated for every Holstein, how many like lonely Holstein segments are there, right? All right, okay, so now we have to consider for the Guernseys, how many lonely Guernsey segments are there? Let's see, let's see, let's make sure something first. Total segments, yeah, yeah, I think we're fine. Okay. All righty, so now we have to do for the Guernseys. For the Guernseys, I have a really easy solution actually. So this works for the Holsteins, right? What we'll actually do is for int i equals zero, i is less than n i plus plus. I wanna flip, I wanna do input of i equals one minus input of i. So this actually just flips the guarantees into Holsteins. And then after we do this, it's kind of lazy, but I could just take this code 
and run it again for this new input, right? And that kind of does like what we want here, right? And then the last thing to do is so that out dot print line answer. All right, so now just let's just, let's just, I think this will probably be wrong. There's a lot of like things we have to keep track of here. So it's gonna be difficult for this to be right first try, but let's just try it, see what happens. So we'll run. All right. And then we have to add our input cases. So let's just do this. So we get three, which works. That's good news, right? Let's let's try some more cases to be sure. Let's try one where there's like uh what do we run here? Now let's just run this again. Let's do 10. And let's do G G G G G G G G. Uh yeah, that's probably 10 of them. Is that 10 of them? Uh Let's just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This should be zero. Okay, great, it is zero. Let's just do uh, one more case to be safe. Let's do five and let's do H, 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 G, 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 O, G, G. So what should this be? Uh, are there any lonely Holstein? There's one lonely Holstein segment and one lonely Guernsey segment, right? The Holstein one is the last H, G, G and the Guernsey one is the H, H, G. So there should be two for this one. Oh, there's three, hold on. This could either mean that we're wrong or it can mean that so the problem is wrong, hold on. Let's see. H, 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 G, G, right? Both these should be none, right? For this one, A is zero, B is two. These, this, these ones, A should be zero and B should be zero, right? Um, and then for this one as well, this one, A should be zero, B should be two. So what should this give us? Um, three times one minus uh, one. So this minus, uh, minus one minus one. So it should give me one, right? For this one right here, number of lonely segments, this is like, oh, right. Okay, so there's actually one more that we missed. There's like this one here too. So, okay, okay. So they're actually, I think they're actually, our, our code is correct. So for this input, I thought there were just gonna be two. I thought there was gonna be this one and this one. But I forgot that this one's also lonely. So, yeah. So our code looks like it works. Uh, let's just submit it to see if it does anything. And if it if there's more error messages, then we'll just reevaluate, you know? But now let's see if we can just submit this. Right, hopefully this runs in the server and not just on my laptop. It's really backed up, I think, in the grading servers. Hopefully, come on, all, all yeses. Don't make me debug this, please. This is hard to debug. Oh no, is this the wrong answer? Okay, well, I have a hypothesis of why this works, right? So if you do this like A plus B thing, A, A times one, A plus one. A lot of times for these things, they, this is actually way too big. So A and B need to be longs initially. Like these need to be longs. Well, this messes up this like indexing because you can't index a array with a long. So we'll just cast these to ints right like this, or that's not how you cast in Java. It's like, let's do this. So basically I think this multiplication might be overflowing the code. Sorry, let's do this. I think that's the issue, right? This multiplication might be overflowing the code. So I'm changing everything to longs. And then when I index into the array, I'll change it to an int, right? Because it's like a plus one times b plus one might be way too big. So let's try that and see if that works. So a very good debugging tip guys, especially for these problems, they tell you, okay, these are way too big for integers. And then you get like the last case wrong. It might be a long overflow issue, which means that you need to store your code in longs. So that's why I'm checking this to debug. We'll just copy this over. In reality, uh, if you're coding for like, if you're coding for a project, try not to copy paste code like this. This isn't really great, but for competitive programming, it's fine. And I don't want to spend time writing like an outer for loop and something like that. So. Oops, sorry, just submitted in C, I'll submit in Java. All right, <sighs> hopefully this works out. Yeah, this I, this seems like the issue, especially if it's in the later sample cases. So hopefully this is done and we can move on from this problem because this one's a little bit annoying to figure out the ins and outs of it. But yeah, here's the code right here. Let's just review the code while it's running. Um, reading the input, right? For every index, you only do this if the in input is one. So this is for the Holsteins, right? So if there's a Holstein, you try to get A and B. This is the hardest part, right? We are A and B. My code here, I read it to be very simple. Yeah, we got it right. My code here, I wrote it to be really simple and also really simplistic. I'm gonna actually, oh yeah, okay. I wrote it to be really simple yet simplistic, right? So um, 
it's a little bit hard to understand. If you want to find A and B in a different way, feel free to. But you kind of find A, find B, and you use A and B to calculate this like quantity, right? And then if you do this for every input, you do it again for the guarantees, and that's your final answer. This problem is a little bit complicated, but you can solve it using arrays, for loops. It's like a for looping array problem. But this number one step is to draw this out and think about things. So a good thing I like to do for these problems, right? Uh, this is something I did in the beginning. I didn't really explain, but for this type of problem, I don't like to think about like, oh, is this lonely? How is this? Is this not lonely? What, et cetera, et cetera, right? I like to think about instead of like, it's easier to focus on problems where there's only one kind of input. So this input is a lot harder to decipher than like this input, right? Like this is a lot easier to think about. It's like H's and things we don't care about that aren't H's. And now here it's easy to think about, okay, what segments are lonely in terms of the H's, right? So that's a cool trick you use. You can use to like think about this in a different way to break it down. There are other ways I'm sure to just do it based on this input alone. But I think for me, doing this, doing the Holsteins first and then doing the guarantees is an easier approach for me, I think. Easier to think about conceptually. So yeah, let's go back to the problems list. I think this one is the easiest problem to set. Um, the second easiest, I, in my opinion, is this next problem. So how are we at on time? We're like about 40 minutes in, done one problem. So we're, we're making good time. Let's just do this one now. All right. Make a new file, problem2.java, and then problem cloud. I'll just, what, what I like to do is instead of copying my code again, I just, because I'm allowed to take my own code if it's in the same, if it's made in the same contest. So I'll just do this. Yeah, and now my shell is set up to work correctly. All right. Okay. So let's look at this problem. Farmer John is installs each label a certain amount. There's an amount of call prefers and, amount the temp and the amount that the temperature is at now. And you want to use these operations of like add to arrange, subtract and arrange to kind of like solve this as quick as, as, quick as possible, right? So how does this work here? This is really tricky. So I think the best way to do this is to draw it out. Again, I love drawing for these problems, right? So for this problem, let's use two colors. So for the preferred, let's just do, let's look at this example case, right? Uh, five, one, five, three, three, four. Okay, so one, five. Three, three, four. And then this is one, two, 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 one. Yeah, one, two, 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 one. So we want to look at kind of this input case. So this is what it has now. This is what it's preferred to be, I believe, right? Let's just draw this one out. So this is where it's at now. One, two, 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 one. And where it's preferred to be is uh, I want to make another color here. Pen color, we'll do blue. One, five, three, three, and then four. So this is kind of the representation of the input, right? We can use these like add one, subtract one operations. You want to send the smallest number of these add one operations, right? So notice that the only thing that matters is actually the difference between them, right? So if I have a cell at like one, one, like it's supposed to be at one and you want it to be at one versus a cell at like two, two, it's the same kind of input. Additionally, right? If it's like one, two versus like two, three, these are kind of the same thing, right? Because you can think of it as like, you need to increase the temperature by one, right? This is also, oh, you need to increase the temperature by one, right? It's kind of, it doesn't really matter that it's like two, three versus one to two, right? So maybe instead of thinking of the input like this, we can instead look specifically at these differences, right? And this could be positive or negative, right? For these, for this input example, all of them are positive. So if we look at the differences, the input looks like this. Oops, sorry. So the first one, the differences, if you look at the differences, right? It's going to be zero, three, one, one, two. So drawing this out, it's like it's the input x is zero, three, one, one, two, right? And now we got to figure out the best sequence of operations to take to like induce this change, right? How do we do that? Well, we can add and subtract stuff from a range to do this. So I wonder if there's an easy way to, to solve this problem. If we draw these ranges as blocks, right? Here's an idea I have. So this is not a proof by any means. Per, let's look at this input specifically, right? So it's like this, this is zero here. 
block of length three, one, one, and this one's two, right? What's the smallest number of range operations? Well, what I could do is maybe like look at this segment here. This is my first range operation, right? And I take one, two, three. So this takes one, two, three, four operations to do. Is that in line with this problem? Oh, this is five actually. Long wait, sorry. I'm missing something here then. Um, what's this? Is, am I interpreting this correctly? Sorry, I'm trying to think through this real quick. This is three. Oh, this is also three. Sorry, that's that's the issue here because um, four minus one is not two. It's equal to this is also three. So it looks like this kind of. So maybe if I like increase this and then I increase this, increase this, increase this, increase this, that'll work, right? So in particular, if I have like a, a graph like this, say my temperature graph looks like this, right? Let's assume they're all positive for now. I'll increase all here. I'll increase all here, and then I'll increase all here, 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 like that, right? Kind of. Maybe this is the optimal solution, right? It's unclear how to like do this. Let me think about this for a little bit. Hold on. It's unclear as of now how to turn this into an actual solution, but it's the idea. There's a neat trick that I actually know for dealing with these like sum, like add and subtract to arrange problems. But this is a little bit of a complicated trick. And I think maybe for the silver version of this problem, you might need this trick, but for this version, you might not need a trick like this. Hmm. Actually, you know, maybe you do need this trick. Okay. So this is kind of this idea, right? So if we have like this here, this here, right? So these are some zeros that I padded on to the end of the array, right? This is like the delta, like the difference array, right? So this needs to be what, maybe plus one, plus two, plus three, minus two, because we can have negative values, right? Negative three plus four, negative three, right? If we want these, we want to kind of add and subtract one to like segments in this array to get this down to an array of all zeros, right? Let's think about this in a slightly different way. So this is the, this is an array that keeps track of like the, this is kind of hard to explain. So this array keeps track of like the difference between where the temperature is now and where it needs to be, right? When we add to a range, let's say we add one to this range, right? Now it becomes like zero, one, three, four, negative one, negative two, five, negative three, zero, right? Think of it like this. What if I had an array that stores the difference between consecutive elements of this array? So what would this array look like? So let's just draw this out. So um, let's 
maybe this is one, this is one, this is one. Do you see how I'm doing this? This is negative five, this is negative one. So this is like the difference between these two things, right? This is negative one. Uh, this is, so sorry, this is seven. This is negative seven. And this is three, right? First of all, since the differences and it starts at zero, ends at zero, right? Because we want them to all be zero. It's the sum of them is equal to zero. It should be equal to zero, right? So you can verify this is six, this is negative. Yeah, so this sum of all these is equal to zero, right? What do we do if we add all the values here, right? Well, if we, how do we change this difference array? So look at the difference way. So let, let me draw this again in a neater tab so that we have a better idea of what's going on. So our original change, like our original array of like, this is called a temp change array, right? Might be like one, two, four, three, five, one, seven, nine. Uh, wait, no, this is all positive numbers. We want to do some variation to this one, two, negative one, negative two, negative one. This is two, this is three, this is negative two, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some zeros here, like some ghost zeros, right? And then I want to. Um, then I want to look at the differences. So my new array will be like one, this will be one, this will be negative one minus, uh, this will be negative three, this will be negative one plus this. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna write the plus sign. One, this will be three, this will be one, this will be negative five, this will be two. Does this sum to, let's first check the sums to zero. So. One, one, negative three, we're at negative one, negative two, negative one, two, four, negative one. Hold on, this is not some zero. Or maybe I'm bad at doing math. This is one, this is two, this is negative one, negative two, negative one, two, three, negative two. Yeah, three, negative two, two. Yeah, so it does some zero. Okay. This is like the delta array, right? So when this array, like I argue that this array becoming all zeros is what we want, right? This we need, we want these to be all zeros, right? This is the same as this array here being all zeros, right? So our goal is to change this difference array to all zeros. Why do I think this is better than changing the original array to all zeros? Well, um, for the original array, right? It's kind of weird because for the initial array, the if you if you increment to a range, you have to like add all these values up by value, right? And that's kind of hard to see how that's useful. But for this difference array here, if we're adding one to all these values, how are we change these differences, right? Well, between this region, these don't change, right? So because they're within the updated region, like they're within this like adding region, so these all get added by ones. So the difference between them doesn't change. What does change though? This value changes and this value changes, right? By how much? So if we're adding one here this value, this would be like zero instead, right? This would be negative one, this will be zero, this will be three, right? So if we're adding one here, this gets changed by plus one and this gets changed by plus one. Oh, actually this gets changed by minus one, right? Sorry, hold on. Why is that true? Well, if we're adding to a range, Right, so if we have uh, values here, this is the difference initially, this is the difference initially, right? Now we're taking this thing and moving it one level up. Well, this gets added by, this This gets added by one and this gets subtracted by one. So this is what an increment operation looks like, right? What does a decrement, or oh no, I erased all of it, whoops. What does a decrement erase operation, that's fine. What does a decrement operation look like, right? Oh, I think it's the opposite. So if we're trying to go from here to here and from here to here, right? We take this and decrease by one, right? This goes to here, this goes to here. This difference gets subtracted by one, this gets added by one, right? So we have this array of differences. Let's say like two, one, negative two, negative one, three, negative three, right? Kind of a simple array. We want to, every operation we do here is either gonna be add one, subtract one, or subtract one, add one, right? So how do we actually calculate the number of operations it takes to like, even out this entire array, right? Well, let me think, come on. One last thing I wanna think about actually is,
Yeah, okay. So yeah, we've kind of boiled down that, that changing this array into all zeros with, so we have two problems that we could solve, right? We can solve the original problem, which is like, hey, you have this array, right? Um, have this array, maybe this is like two, this is like three, this is like one, zero, this is four, this is, hold on, I'm bad at math again. Oh, sorry. Jeez, I'm, it's terrifying they put the erase all right next to the erase. That's really messes with me. It's three, this is zero, right? So we could take this original input array, this original delta array, right? Take this and shift it to get all zeros using this like increment all to a range operation, right? Or we can look at the difference array here, right? And change it to all zeros using this like plus one minus one operation, right? I argue that this second problem is much easier to think about than this first problem. Because number one, you don't deal with these annoying like range, add one, subtract ones. You're dealing with differences, right? With differences, it's as simple as like looking at values and being like, okay, I can add things and just subtract things here, right? Why is this problem a lot easier? There's a very simple solution for this actually, right? All of these plus ones, you want to turn to zeros, right? And all these negative ones, you want to turn to zeros, right? So you're going to be adding one for each of these and subtracting one for each of these, right? So like every time you do an update, right? You're either going to be, you do call in minus one on one of these positive ones or subtract one from one of these like, uh, sorry, a, po a plus one from one of these negative ones, right? So how many updates does it take? Well, if we sum up all the positive values, so the sum of positives, first of all, this should equal the sum of negatives, right? Because this entire thing sums to zero. So sum of positives is equal to sum of negatives, right? And uh, it's also equal to our answer because our answer is just every, every time we do a, a range update, we subtract a positive and we add a negative. And we have to do this like, sometimes like we should do this like x times where x is the sum of positives so answers to sums of positives of this array this is really easy to code right so step one let's let's look at the, let's look at the code here it's a little bit easier to code so what does it look like we have to do so step one is use input to get delta uh, change array right get differences between inputs of change array sum up positives that's our answer this is what our algorithm kind of looks like right this is very simple to code so how does this let's run this on example right so difference right here looks like uh let's just do so this is zero this is zero three one one three yeah zero three one one three right uh, we have to remember to pad this with zeros here and then compute this difference array. So the difference array here is zero. This is three. This is negative two. This is zero. This is plus two. And this is negative three, right? So summing up the positive ones, we have three plus two. This is equal to five, right? And that's actually equal to our answer right here. So that seems like this works correctly. Let's just code this now. This is not too hard to code at all. So we'll just do, um, oh, we'll just, never mind. Hold on. We'll just do this, right? N equals that next int, right? I think we get the input first, and then we'll do I equals zero, i is less than n, i plus plus. Just do p, int array p, and then this is a preference, this is the temperature, right? New int array n. This is the preference array of all the preferences, right? So this is a temperature array with all the temperatures. So for each input, we'll just do P of i is equal to n dot next int. And then for int i equals zero, i is less than n i plus plus. P of i is equal to n dot next int. Well, then we'll here, we'll do, um, we'll make a new thing called int array change equals new int array. Let's do for and to i equals zero i is less than and i plus plus change of i equal to p of i minus t of i so the preference minus the current temperature so the, if the premise is five the temperature is two it's a change by plus five right all right so how's here's our change array now we need to get our delta array so what's the length of delta do we have our okay here 
So if this is the original array here, our delta is actually of length one plus this array because we've padded it with zeros, right? So our delta is like n plus one length actually. So we'll just do this, right? Int array delta equals new int array n plus one. And we'll do this for int i equals zero, i is less than n i plus plus. I think we should actually do. Um, hmm. It's an easy way to do this delta. So for delta of, so here's delta, right? Delta one through n minus one is really straightforward, right? It's just input of i minus input of i minus one, right? This last two things are a little bit complicated. It's like, this is array of i, this is negative array of n minus one. So we'll just deal with that separately. So we'll go from i equals zero to one to n, right? Delta of i is equal to, sorry, change of i minus, change of i minus one, right? And then we have to set delta of zero and delta of n. So delta of zero is equal to change of zero and then delta at n, so the last thing, right, is equal to negative change of n minus one. Yeah. So now our delta array set. Now I have to go through and sum up all the negative values. So ants int ants equals zero. This one we don't have to store the answers along because it's not going to be that big. Actually, is it going to be that big? I think we're fine. If we get errors later on, we'll change this along. But I think int is fine. Or int i equals zero, i is less than equal to n, or i is less than just n plus one, right? That's the length of a delta array, i plus plus. If delta of i is greater than zero, if delta of i is positive, ants plus or equals delta of i, right? And then we just uh, system.out.println answer, system .out line answer. For this problem, uh, I think it's gonna be harder to come up with test cases. So I'm not gonna, so here's what I like to do in actual contest with time restrictions. I'll run this here. I don't like to test unnecessarily. So I'll just run the input. If this works, the input case, I usually submit this. And then uh, if it fails later, I just do some hybrid tests. Hopefully it doesn't fail, but we'll check it. So this, if this gets all correct, then I would have wasted time testing. So this is, saves a lot of time. You don't, have to, you don't have to test super strongly. Okay, so it seems good so far. Let's just let it go. Running, running, running. Perfect, so this got full solved. And this is kind of why I like to do this because it's like, there's no point testing if I'm like fairly confident my solution works and I can just submit it and see if it works. So yeah, time to go to the last one. So it's walking home problem. Let's look at time. So this is something I checked throughout. So I've used up about an hour. I have like a lot of time left. So we're doing great on time. And keep in mind an actual contest, if your approach is a lot slower than this, that's completely fine. Um, this is something like, this is a speed you'll get to over time. And it just takes a lot of like experience to build up this kind of like thinking speed and stuff like that. Try to follow along with my logic if possible. Like that's something that like, that'd be good for you guys to follow along with. But in terms of speed, don't worry about it if you guys are a lot slower because Again, it's just all about experience, right? All right, okay. So this is a problem that I didn't want to solve until later. This is a hard problem, in my opinion. Um, how do I get, how are we gonna do this? So the first thing I noticed is that N is not very big and it's like 50, right? So what's 50 by 50? It's like uh, roughly 2,500. I almost kind of want to try to brute force this, but I don't want to, let's just think. Actually, no, it's not that bad. So, okay. Let's keep in mind this, right? So Bessie can only walk down to the right, right? So she can only, let's think about the first brute force solution. This is, I think, too slow of a brute force almost. So we can actually look at all of Bessie's, so this is haystacks, 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 whatever. We can look at all of Bessie's pads, right? All of Bessie's pads, count them all up. Like all of Bessie's legal pads, you can kind of like, loop through these, right? Count them all up, check how many times they change direction and check if that's equal to three, right? 
And if that's equal to three, then uh, you know we're good. We don't have to worry about it. And if it's not equal to three, then we're in trouble and we have to throw it out. So we sum up the number of paths at most up to three. Well, so at most up to K, where K is at, at most three. So that's something we can do. So it's definitely something we can do. Um, I think it's, we, we wanna avoid doing that if possible because it's, how fast is this? Well, how, this, this speed depends on the number of total paths. How many paths are there? Uh, every path is like, so if we think of a path, the sequence of downs and rights, right? So every path looks like this, like D, 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 R, D, R, D, D, R. Like this is kind of like a path, right? How many, uh, how, what's the length of a path? Well, if our grid is length 50, we have to go down 49 times and then to the right 49 times, right? So the total number of Ds in this path, the sum of all Ds should be 49, right? And the sum of all Rs should be 49. This is in the biggest case where the grid is of size 50 by 50, right? So in this case, it's a 98 length path and it's all DDRs, right? And you can do any combination of DDRs. So in all these 98 positions, it can either be a D or an R, right? So a 98 length of the path, right? This can either be a D or an R, right? So this is like two combinations for all 99s, like two to the 98, which is way too big for to, to brute force, right? What's another way to do this? Well, we wanna check pads of a certain number of switch time, right? So we wanna look at K switches. So our path length here, right? If I tell you, hey, we only wanna switch twice. Let's say K is equal to two, right? We only wanna switch twice. Um, how many pads do we now have left? Well, what I can instead doing, instead of trying to enumerate all the pads and checking if they switch a number of times, what I can do instead is this. I say, what if Bessie switches here and here, right? There's two, comp there's like, how many, like, how many, like, what, pa what does this path look like? Bessie switches here and here. Let's say Bessie starts with a down move always, right? So it goes down, 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 right, right to right, to right, right, right. Right, and then down, 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 right? So what I've actually done is I've taken this path problem and kind of like almost like turned it into, instead of like, oh, what does the path look like? What does it have enough switches? I like find where the switches are first, like plot them out and then find the path, right? So how many times do we need to search to get this? Well, uh, K is at most three, right? And you take a 98 length path, you find three places to switch, right? And it can either start D or R. So there's like two ways you can start and 98 cubed different places to put things, right? So, and then for after we do that, we have to kind of run this path, which takes another 98 times. So after I like, like place the switches here, I have to kind of like run this path and check to see if it works, right? So that takes another 98. This is roughly like, two times 10 to the eighth. I think this is actually good. Uh, Java should work on this. Um, Python gets dicey, so just be careful. And then C++ should definitely work in time, right? So this is kind of the algorithm, right? It's like this path is a blank slate right now, right? Um, this start here can either be a D or an R. I guess we could, what we can do is we can consider them both, right? So let's first do D. So let's first like try to put switches. So you try every combination of switches, right? This is like a, for every like, this is like S1, this is S2, this is S3, right? We brute force and try every combination of S1, S2, S3. And then what we'll do is we'll just fill out the path. So we'll start going down, down, down. And then if we hit like an S3 location, we'll switch to rights, right? Uh, one issue is that we have to make sure we're not running into hay bales, right? So if we try a path, there's an array. We try a path and then we run to a hay bale here. We wanna kind of exit out and be like, okay, that path's no good. Let's just like continue on to the next one, right? And if a path gets to the bottom successfully without running into hay bales, we wanna add one to our answer basically, right? So that's kind of the idea behind this algorithm. You can try to brute force all the paths, right? So let me just write them in terms of code. So what this approach looks like is this. Oh, sorry, hold on. Autocomplete does stuff sometimes. Okay, so try all positions of, uh, I guess we can do for starting move in the set like D or R, right? You can either start with a down or a right. It doesn't really matter which one. 
try all, all moves of the form. Um, S1, S2, S3. Now we have some switches, right? Now we enumerate this path, right? We go for I from zero to 98 because there's 98 moves in total, right? And then at each move, if like our S, if I is equal to S1 or S2 or S3, uh, hold on, this needs to be tabbed up because this is inside the inner for loop, right? If I is equal to S1 or S2 or S3, right? Uh, direction. Just do direction equals starting move. Direction equals uh, other direction. We'll switch directions, right? If hey bell, so if uh, so, oh, we have to also keep track of like x equals zero, y equals zero. Oops, sorry. We want to get to we want to get to like n minus one and minus one, right? This is where we want to be at the end of all this. 21. Um, if x, if a grid of x, y is a hay bale, or x is greater than n, greater than equal to n, or y is greater than equal to n, right? What does this mean? Well, this means we kind of ran off the side of the board. So if any of this happens, we want to just like break, right? If x equals n minus one and y equals n minus one, then we want to do answer plus plus, right? Increment our answer. And then we want to step in that direction. Okay, so this is kind of the idea here. Um, So what's the really, I think this is something that's a little bit smart about this approach. Um, if I give it three switches and I allow like S1 could equal S2 and S3 could equal S1 or S2, right? If I kind of enable this, well, if I have a place and I have like a, let's just look at an example, right? So. Actually, hold on, let's not worry about it. This is a little bit complicated. I don't wanna like bore you guys with this kind of overcomplication. So this is for three positions, right? We also have to try like for all positions, try like of S1, S2. So this is like two switches, right? And then we do this stuff. And then we also have to try for all positions of S1, like, cause it could also be one switch. I think, wait, two, the switch, yeah, two switches. Yeah, two switches works. So I'll try for all positions of S1. So this is like one switch, two switch, three switch, right? Like that. Okay. We have to kind of do this stuff, right? <laughs> all right. And actually, so this is actually pretty good. Um, So, yeah, yeah, okay, this is fine, I think. Yeah, this is probably a good way to code this problem. So let's just start coding, I guess, and then we'll, uh, this is kind of gonna be messy because we'll have a lot of different code for different cases. We'll do the three case first. Um, wait, do we have to switch exactly k times? At most, okay, that's annoying to us. That's like really annoying to us, okay. <clears throat> So I want to switch out most k times. Um, yeah, let's just code and get this like over with. This will be painful because we have to like do all this stuff, right? But yeah. Oh, okay. Whew. So uh, let's take in mind the input example. The input is a little bit weird for this problem, right? You input t like the number of test cases, and then you get n and you get k, right? So and uh, test. Test less than t, test plus plus. This is what I like to do, kind of like every test is its own thing in the for loop. Um, 
uh, solve, we'll call solve, just to make our main method less messy. Because if we do like, look at this, if, if we don't do solve, we'll have like four S1, four S2, four S3. And then here we have like uh, four I from zero to 98. And then we have like things here, like, it'll be like quadruple, actually, this is fine. Uh, is this fine? Yeah, this is fine. Okay, okay, whatever. This is okay. We'll have a quadruple nested for loop, which is like, you don't wanna, you wanna avoid this as much as possible. Um, but for a programming context, yeah, it's, it's okay, so. Okay, then we wanna take in the input. So red equals new, I guess we'll do, um, yeah, car array, okay. Yeah, that should be fine. Oh. Four and i equals zero i is less than an i plus plus. This is like muscle memory at this point because I've typed this line so much. J equals zero is j is less than n, j plus plus. Grid of ij is equal to, um, I guess we have to do like, String. To line dot car at j, yeah. It's either gonna be a dot or it's gonna be a h. What is this? Oh, okay. Yeah, a dot or an h, right? So. That's what the grid is. And then we have to actually do this. So we'll just do this, right? <laughs> just like the K1 case. Uh, if K2, it's the K2 case. If K is greater than three, this is terrifying because we'll have a and tuple nested loops now, which is, you know, just amazing. But okay, so let's first do the three Ks because that's easy. That's the that's the hardest one, and then we'll do the easier ones later. So uh, uh, this is gonna be fun. For S one is equal to because we can't switch in the initial move actually. So if we're trying to maintain like three switches, our switches need to be in um. for int s1 equals to one. I don't think we can switch in the first move because we might overcount. Um, s1 is less than, we also can't switch on the last. So we have a bunch of moves, right? We have a sequence of moves. The move length is 98 moves long um, or like n minus one times two moves long. The first move is something, and then can't switch on the first move. Yeah, yeah, you can switch on any other. So, of length two times n minus one, because our moves go from zero to that. There's like that many moves, right? So, this one could be anything like that. S1 plus plus or int S2. So now S2. It can't be less than equal to S1 because you can't switch the second time before the first time. So S2 is equal to S1 plus one. S2 is less than two minus one, S2 plus plus. And then for S3, it's uh, for int S3 equals S2 plus one. So now you have to make sure that three is after two. S3 is less than two times N minus one. S2 plus plus. All righty, so now those are all the switches, our sequence. So I guess uh, here's what we'll do. So the direction, 
is either going to be zero or one. So, so zero means down and one means up. So that's the reason I do this is because for switching, instead of having logic, it's just like one minus direction. That's how you switch directions, right? Switch direction equals zero first, right? Uh, X equals zero and Y equals zero. Now, All right, so what this is here. Oh, I already used I, didn't I? It's here. What is this? Oh, wait, sorry, hold on. This should be, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, that's one less nested for loop. I'm very thankful. Now that I messed up some alignments, so. I think this is good now. Okay, okay, this is this is better at least. Oh, we just have to do um I think our answer. Um I think our answer could fit an integer, so int answer equals zero. All right, okay, okay. So for i, so this is going through the actual path, right? First check if x if a grid of x y is equal to a hay bale uh, or x is greater than equal to n or y is greater than equal to n, right? So if we're off the board or we step into hay bale, break. Just get out of there. Move on. Oh, this is too, too long, right? Now, if that's not true, then we have to take a step in the direction. If, uh, oh yeah, so if i is equal to s1 or i is equal to s2 or i is equal to s3, any of these are true? Then direction equals direction minus one. And then the last thing is to actually take a step in that direction. So if uh, direction, actually, so we could do this. If direction equal to, to, to zero. So if we go down, then uh, y minus equals one <clears throat> else x minus equal one. So, oh, no, no, sorry, this is plus equals instead because we're going up the tree. So if the direction is down, we like increment y by one. So y plus one is because we read this like in order. So y, y going up is in the down direction. So if we have an input grid, let's just like clarify this real quick. If we have an input grid like this, this is like increasing y, right? So going down is like y plus one, which is counterintuitive because y plus one is usually going up. But yeah, just a caveat here. And then we'll do, I think that's it, right? We'll just change the direction. And then at the end of the day, we have to, if we haven't stepped off the grid, we've made two times n minus one moves, haven't stepped off the grid, haven't um, ran into a hay bill. Then at the end of all this, Uh, let's do int i. If we've gone through everything, so if, the, if we're at the end and i is equal to, if i is equal to two times n minus one, then we'll just do answer plus plus. Then we found it, in, right? So that's the good part. The only thing is we assume the direction is down initially, direction could be right initially. So, if, so I think I can do direction equals zero and then copy paste this code, or I can do something else. So for int direction, in, oh, sorry, for int direction equals zero, direction is less than two, direction plus plus. So this just goes loops through direction from, actually, hold on, no, this might mess me up. Uh, it's easier actually to do int direction equals zero. All right. And then we just take this code, copy paste it, direction equals one. Okay, this is very, very sloppy. Um, you want to ideally avoid this sloppiness, but it's fine. You know, if we can't for our contest again, it's fine if we can't. So yeah, um, this is the code for case three, which is a lot. And this could also, I, I want to remind you guys, this is highly, a lot of code means a lot of bugs. So we're going to probably spend some time debugging it. So get real comfortable with this code, but what we'll do for two and one and two is we'll take this, let me get rid of this terminal. 
paste it for here and here. And then we'll make some slight changes to make this. Geez, where did I copy? Oh, here it is, okay. So for this, we don't switch S1 and S3. We only use S1 now. So we don't need these two things, I think. Or which ones do we not use? Don't use these two? No, 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 no. It's these two we don't need. I hate lining up parentheses. So annoying. Um, yes, and then we just do this. You go down like that. We only need to check this. Yeah. So this is for one switch, right? And our code for two switches is similar. We just remove this, remove that, uh, remove these. And then tab indent this entire thing down one. So this is how we do it. At the end of the day, we're gonna increment to answer and, and whatnot, right? And then system.out, this is gonna be such a pain. System.out.print line answer. So this is gonna be a big code for us to debug, which I'm really looking forward to. But yeah, let's just try it and see if it works. So let's run this on the input. If it works for this input, again, one of these problems that I'm really not gonna spend time debugging unless I'm wrong and I need to debug. Oh, sorry, something wrong happened when I ran this. What was the issue? Okay. Oh wait, I got an exception. Okay, I got index out of bounds for line one or for uh, line fourteen. That's not good. But let's see, where is that line fourteen? Is oh, it's here. <sighs> hmm. What on earth? Is that a bounce for length one? Why would that be length one? Oh, wait, why don't I make this n by k? It should be n by n. Sorry. All right, let's try that again. Oh, geez. Something wrong happened again. We got another error. What is this error? Three for length three in where? What line? Line problem three to line job 25. Okay. Two n minus one plus one. So wait a minute. What? Oh, line 25 is here. Oh, okay, okay. I think it's okay. I'm trying to check whether the grid is a hay bale before I check if it's out of bounds. If this is out of bounds, then this will throw a big error. So we want to check this before. And then Java will use something called short circuiting to enable. So, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, fixed. Okay, okay. Grid of X. Y is equal to H is the thing. Yeah, okay, okay, cool, cool. So I, I just switched the ordering of these. So if these two are greater than N, it actually stops checking and skips this check and break. So I avoid this like error, which is really useful to us. So we're gonna change that for everything here. So you look for out for, run this again. This is not the friendliest way to run programs. Oh, that's not the input. Jeez. Okay, I'll recopy it. This is not, yeah, this is not the friendliest way to run programs. Uh, this should be a friendlier way to do it, but unfortunately, I'm working with this input. So, oh, it's an infinite looping. It should be infinite looping. There should be no way for it to infinite loop. I didn't put any wild true loops here. Is it waiting on input? You know what, here, I, I think something we'll do is, 
we'll run this for a smaller input. So instead of this, like, we'll just do this one, three, one case. Like this is, yeah, yeah, okay. Why would it be infinite looping? Come on. Oh, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll figure this out. We'll run this and then as our input, we'll do one and then we'll copy paste that. No, that's the wrong thing I copy pasted, okay. Let's just make another input case that's smaller. It's just a standard check. Cause right now our code's not even running. Huh? Hello? Okay, so this would be the like input case we use. This one, three, one case is a lot quicker. Well, I think my, uh... let me, hold on. I think my air buds just shut off. Oh no, it's just low. Okay, cool, cool. We'll finish this up. Um... These are annoying. I hate debugging. It's my least favorite part of coding. Oh, wait, so four, it does, I think it, oh, okay, that's, that's too big, but what was it doing wrong before? What's wrong with this input? Why doesn't that work? Wow, I guess that's, that's slow. Is it waiting for? No, it's not waiting for more input. What's going on? Why is it four? A lot of questions. Um, why would it be infinite looping? Let me see. Maybe it's just too slow. No, but these ends are very small. These are, they should not be bearing it out. Wait a minute, hold on. Wait a minute, hold on. Something, something's up here. What is this 410? How does this make it here? That's not in the input. That's so strange. Okay. That is very strange. We'll get rid of this. What happens if I paste this here? That's pasting the wrong thing. Yeah, that's right. Right? Where does the 410 come from? Oh, it's the output from our program. Okay, okay. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, so this is the one that's, this is the guy who's time only exceeding us. Sorry, this is really messy. We'll get rid of this stuff. So one, and then we'll do that. Okay, that's our input now. We'll check that. Okay, so this does glitch out the program. What is wrong with this guy? What's wrong with him? Ah, uh, so probably the Kate, but hold on. Probably the Kegel three code's glitching. Let me let me just check something real quick. Hold on. Um this is a painful problem to look at. Let's let's hold on. Let's let's first actually okay, this bug is really hard to tackle. Let me do an easier bug. So this this is just the outputting the wrong thing, which is easier for me to work with. So four, why is it not putting four? That's not right. So in this code here, um, K is greater than equal to one. So that's true. S one equals one S one is less than two times n plus one. So how many moves is this? It's a, there should be four moves, right? One, two, three, four. Um, and then each move has a direction. Um, in a switching point. Mm. Switching point can be anywhere from one to, let me check something, hold on. So, Four switches, four directional changes. 
Oh, I know what's happening. Okay. So I'm not checking for the last. Oh, okay. The last move, I let it to go into an illegal square because I don't check the last move. Are we guaranteed we don't start with an H, right? Let me see. Yeah, the top left and bottom right box hay bills. So what I'll actually do is I'll move this hay bill checker to here. Yeah, I'll do that for all of them. This should work. So the reason why is that if I move it to the top, it doesn't check for the last square, whether I'm like legal or not. So move it here. Jeez, this will take me a long time. This is why you don't copy paste code because when you edit it, you have to edit it for all the copy paste things. But um, I don't want to spend time figuring out how to make this into like, I think it's easier to like, like it's le it requires less knowledge of like functions and stuff like that if we, if we copy paste stuff. So I, yeah, I don't want people to have to know functions to use this. All right, so this should solve at least this problem, right? Why is it outputting 42? Oh, I output the, okay, cool, cool. So now this is outputting two as it should be. Three, two, okay. Let's see what this outputs. One. Oh, what is this? Another bug, okay, that's not good. Line 80. What's wrong with line 80? Oh, I didn't change these. Why did I not change these? Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't change any of these. That's not good. What? I could have sworn to change them. So there's one here, one here, one here, one here. And these two need to be changed. Um, so I run it again. Okay, this is the three, two case. Four, is that correct? Yeah, it looks like it. This case is the biggest headache for me. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's, it's something's wrong with this thing. Oh, oh my goodness, this is such a, a lame bug. This is S3, this used to be S2. Okay, that explains why it's infinite looping. Okay, let's go back, let's take, let's take it from the top. Oh wait, that's not the, okay, sorry. One, three, three, and then uh, what is it? Da, 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 da. Four, okay. That's right, right? Oh, no, it should be six, right? Six ways to get to there with three switches? How many moves are there? There's four, three switches. There should be one way to get to there with three switches. Yeah, let's look at these actually. One switch, this is two switch, this is two switch, this is two switch, and then three switches RDR and then RDD. Wait a minute, hold on. Oh, DRDR and then RDRD. So there should be two things it's detecting. Hmm. This is four? Something's up here. So the only one that should influence, so only should be one, right? Print S1 plus plus S2 plus plus S3. Uh, this should be such not that print line. This is verifying that I only, the only valid, wow, that's a weird color. How did that happen? Okay, that's much better. Oh, I should have kept it, it looked cool, okay. But I'm verifying that the only one it checks is where it goes one, two, three. So that should be the only one it checks. Um, and then we'll copy this here. This is taking me the longest time to debug. I, this problem is this problem's tough. Okay, one, two, three is the one it checks, but for one, two, three, both of them should evaluate to true, right? Let's see.
So what do the things look like? It's uh, zero, one, zero, one. Hmm. What on earth is going on? This is never triggering. So they're walking off the edge. What is up with that? Hmm. Well, something we can do is we can actually debug in this app, which I think is nice. So can you put a breakpoint here? Put a breakpoint. Actually, hold on. Just do this. I'll put a breakpoint in here. It's one reason I like using Java. Debugging is really advanced in Java. You can set breakpoints and stuff. I have first time trying this feature on VS Code, so I don't know if it works or not, but debug. Oh, something turned. Oh, sorry. I input was wrong. So sorry, everything turned orange when I clicked debug. I got really excited. Debug. Oh, it did it again. Okay. What? Oh, no. I copied the input wrong again. All right. Well, that's not good. Get me out. Oh, Jesus. Okay. That's not good. Debug. All right. One. And then this thing, okay. Great, okay, that's really cool. Where are my variables though? Debug console, is that where it would be? Is that how it do? Um, oh, wait, is it here? Oh, here it is. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, okay. Nice. Okay, and then this is. Okay. All right, okay. So here, um, so let's do let's do that. Step to the next thing. Oh, no, no, that's not what I want. Did I just run the whole thing? Oh, no, I did. Oh, that's not good. Okay, okay. Okay, I see how this works now. Okay, so you debug here. One and then our input goes here. Check this console for everything here. This is the next one, right? No, no, no. What is the what is the um what's I? Wait, hold on, this should work. It just went through everything, right? Huh? Oh, oh, here's the bug. This is this is kind of annoying. Okay. Shouldn't be direction minus one. This is one minus direction. Yeah. Well, we can actually do direction equals direction minus one and switch with direction equals one minus direction. All of them. That should, that might do it. I, I think maybe we'll just run this. Um, it's very unclear what the output is. Okay. This is two, four, six, two, four, six, two. Zero, zero, three, what? Zero, zero, geez, this is really odd. Uh, I think this is the right stuff, but let me just verify for something that gets wrong. So this one, six, perfect. Okay, let's do this one. This should be zero. 
That's two? Oh, no, that is two. Sorry, that is two. Yeah, I freaked out for nothing. Okay, this last one, we'll try to see if this is six, and if this is, then we'll submit, because I'm so done with this problem. This has been a joy, right? Okay, cool. So, seems right. We'll submit and see. Let's talk about time complexity real quick. So, again, I think we kind of went over this, right? The, the most intensive one is where we have three stopping points we can place in the list. So, there's 98 directions. They go from, um, there's 98 different, like, directions that we interaction we have to follow to kind of get to the end. So it's a 98 length list. We have stopping switching points that are three things in the 98 size list. So it's like 98 cubed. And average time after we face the stepping points, we have to actually step through 98 more times. And then we have to also, um, there's two like different, um, what's it called? Two different, directions we have to check. So it's about like end of the fourth, which is, should be fine for n equals 50. But I guess there's only one way to find out. We'll just try to submit this and see if it works. I think the biggest thing I'm worried about is time limit exceeding. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm worried. If the time will exceeds, there's some things we can think of to make it better, don't worry. But I think it'll time will exceed, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's looking like it. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So we need to kind of optimize this a little bit to make sure it doesn't TLE. So it's tailing on three things, which is not what we want it to do. Um, Ooh, this is the biggest loop thing that is annoying. This is something we don't like to happen. Hmm. I'm thinking if maybe we can break this up into each thing in a loop. So we could try to like, because. Yeah, there's something I think to do here that makes it better, but let me just think, is this necessary? So if we have three stopping points, we really have to check these three satisfy and we could just run through this here but that's into the fourth which is kind of bad so there's actually another way to do this much quicker we'll just do this right So what I'm thinking is the optimization to make to this, right? Instead of looping through these three things and then checking for these, instead what we can do is we, we have like a, we kind of run these because we're doing a lot of overlapping work for this, I think. So what we can do here is, um, We have first like, we just first have like S1, right? So we take, if we, if S1 is at like K, so for the first like steps from zero to K minus one, so the first like K steps, we just take like this. And then if we ever run out, if we ever run out here, we don't have to evaluate like, any further, we don't have to keep going down the loop, right? 
So I think that's a better way to check if this works. Yeah, so what I'll do is this, right? I guess I'll do this for int starting there equals zero. Return equals zero starting there is less than two starting there plus plus. So for the starting directions, right? And then we'll do this. This loop thing we'll get rid of. This gets tabbed up. This gets tabbed up. Okay. So check whether taking. So starting there loops to zero and one. So check whether taking um, S1 steps from starting there is possible. If it's not a continue, like if it's not possible, you go to the next S1. If it is, then we try to keep doing this stuff. So now we take, check whether taking S2 steps is reasonable. Like we kind of do this inside. So it exits early. This is a little bit faster, I think, right? So just how we do it, right? For int i equals zero, i is less than s1, i plus plus. So for zero to s1, you do this, right? Take steps. So uh, I think my earbuds just shut off. Yeah. So let me just charge these real quick. So what is this right here? We just do this code, right? Just do um, x equals zero, y equals zero. And then if direction equals, if starting dir, we'll just do starting dir equals zero. Oh, this is index, sorry. y equals zero. Greater than y greater than greater than x, I guess h break. Yeah, okay. Um, let's do this. Into i equals zero. So if i, if at the end of the day we get i equal to s1 like this, Um, I guess we could do this, sorry, if S is less than S1. So if we're unable to continue, uh, if we're if we're trying to take S1 steps this way and we run into a hay bale like here, we run into a hay bale here, then we want to stop, we want to terminate. So we want to just do this, right, continue. What this does is it try, tries the next value of S1 and it skips the current value, which is it makes us a lot faster, right? So yeah. Yes, okay. So that should do it. So now we do the same thing, right? Int x equals, and then int y equals. So what this is is like, I know S1, right? I know we took S1 steps in a current direction. So it's like zero. So let's do this, right? If starting there, equals zero. So we took down steps. So down steps uh, change Y and up steps change X, right? Else, so X equals, we'll do X equals um, zero, Y equals S1, because we took S1 steps down, right? Else, X, equals s1 y equals zero so this is kind of where we would be at right 
And then this is the weird part. So we iterate from i equals um, s1 to i equals s2. Instead, we're checking one minus starting dir because now, so if we went in starting dir initially, our next direction to for the second loop would be one minus that, right? So that's why here we're checking one minus starting dir equals zero. Taking the opposite step, and again, it checks here, right? And then if i is less than s2, And then we do this third loop, right? So this is really weird. It's, there's like two cases. This code, it's really, it just, it seems like it's slower actually, but it's it's much faster because we're kind of doing this, right? Initially we're fixing uh, S1, S2, S3, and then we're like trying these steps, right? So it's like end of the fourth. This one, instead of fixing it, what we're doing is like, we're saying, okay, Oh, we find S1, so we try taking steps to S1, right? If this fails, then we just go to the next X1. If this doesn't fail, then we keep going. So it prunes out a lot of the search space and hopefully makes it a lot faster. But um, okay. So if S equals, it's starting there at zero. So that means you took S1 steps in, in the Y direction. And then we took, S2 minus S1 steps in the X direction. So what does that look like? So if we have our directions as like D, 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 R, 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 and then like D, 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 right? So this is S, this is S1, this is S2, right? Um, we took D steps in S2 direction and then for S2, we took the difference between them steps in the other direction. So that's why it's, S2 minus S1 here. And the other one's reversed. It's S1 and then it's S2 minus S1. Let's see how to get a starting direction, right? And then you loop, you try this, right? So for I equals S2, I is less than S3. I think that's what you need to do. I think that holds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two I is less than X, S3. Oh wait, no, sorry. One, two, three, yeah, okay, okay. You're, you, so for the second half, so S1, S2, S3, you go back to, you revert back to your starting direction. Do this. Um, if I is less than S3, continue. So if S is less than S3, you continue to go to the next one here, right? Then for i is equal to s3, i is less than 2 times n minus 1 plus. Now we're back to the 1 minus starting their direction, right? All right, sorry, let's just copy this inner stuff. If starting direction equal uh, 1 minus starting direction, actually. This is such messy code. I hate this so much, but... Um, the idea of it is kind of what I described earlier, right? I think if you actually wrote in C++, there's a decent chance you might've just passed these test cases. I'm not sure how they intended for you to do this. So maybe this is not necessary optimization for C++. But for Java, uh, I think it's pretty necessary. So if I have my standard equal to zero, y plus equal to one, x plus equal to one, and then this check. Now, if i is equal to two times n minus one, finally here we do, and plus plus. So there's a, I mean, this is the optimization we made to the last case. We don't have to go back and do this for all the other ones because this is O of N. This is like, this is O of N squared, this is O of N cubed. So these are very fast. This is, this is the o, originally O of N fourth. And now we shrank it down a little bit. So it's faster. Um, I think it's O of N cubed now. Maybe, maybe it's still O of N, N fourth, but it's a much better constant factor. So we only need to do this for this last case. Let's try to run this and see if it works. Um, there's a high chance it doesn't work, but we'll just see.
Okay, well, that worked. Let's try this. Oh. Oh, is it three six? I think this might have worked. So we'll, we'll try to submit this. Does it again? I, I like. I don't want to get you guys' hopes up uh, unnecessarily. There's a high chance it doesn't work, but we'll see. Um, we'll try this. The idea was kind of what I said before, where we 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 don't want to like we don't want to like try. So we don't want to fix S one, S two, S three, and then try every path. Like try the path, right? Because this will be O of n to the fourth. Um, a better idea is instead to look at S1, you try the path here, look at S2, you try this next section, look at S3, you try this next section. And if any of these doesn't work, then you stop, like you, you move on and you ignore this current one. So, oh, wow, I got a time limit here. This is really unfortunate. It's still like, it's still really slow. Give another way to optimize this. Um, honestly, I'm so tempted to just take this and put it into C++ and see if it works. But um, let's see, where else could this use optimization? Let me think about this for a little bit. This is very tricky because we want to get a full solve in this contest, ideally. This is like, really, really bad if I like don't get a full solve on this. Let me just think for a little bit. Sometimes you just have to sit and just think. I could try to apply this optimization to all the other ones, like just apply this to here and to here. What other tricks do I have? All right, I can think of one last thing. Um, what I really need to do so I'm stepping through like, okay, so what I'm doing is for S1, I'm kind of stepping forward in this direction and actually trying everything in between. What I could do is design a lookup table and see like beforehand, right? So for every cell, for every of these like N squared different cells and for every direction, right? So maybe the direction is in this direction or this direction. And for every number of steps, that's N cubed, right? Which is like fine. I pre-record like whether it's possible to step that far. So I can edit my code like this, right? Um, I read in the grid and then I do like a bool array, 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 array. Possible equals new boolean array. This is gonna be like n by n by n, uh, starting direction is two and then n, right? So this is how this works. So for n i equals zero, i less than n i plus plus. Uh, so this is filling out this table if possible, right? For So we'll do for int x equals zero, x is less than n, x plus plus, right? So we're already starting x location for int y equals zero, y is less than n, y plus plus, right? And for int dir, dir equals zero, dir is less than two, dir plus plus. So this is like all the directions, right? Now we have to do this, right? Um, um, or int, Zero i less than n plus plus. Um. Yeah. So if I, this is kind of where we have to add this stuff, right?
pos, uh, we'll do in, uh, boolean pos true. So what my idea here is kind of like this, right? So I want to pre-compute this array. So when I go forward here, I don't have to take n steps. I instead can do o of one lookup in this array, right? That's the idea I want to achieve. So to make this array, we want to ideally make it in like n cube time. We don't want to make it in, we don't want to spend too long making this array, right? How do we make this in cube time? Well, for every cell, for every direction, right? We'll keep track of a variable called possible. It starts as true. And then as we go forward, we opt. So if this is an H here, then true is pos is false, right? And then we keep on stepping through and updating pos as we go along, right? And this will take O of n cube time to build. And then we can query this in O of one. So that saves a lot of time. So, oops, sorry. So pos starts at true. If this is, like if this condition breaks, pos equals false. And then here is, we'll do, um, we'll do, um, uh, input, sorry, we'll do, uh, what's it called? What do we call this again? Possible. At um, x, y, what is this? Dir i is equal to pos. And then now we take a step. So we do if direction, if dir equals zero, you add y. If x equals zero, you add x. Oh, actually, we'll do, um this is starting x. So this is the difference. This is starting x, starting y, starting, this is like, we'll call sx and xy. And then here, We'll do s s x. We'll do x equals s x, y equals s y. So this in O of n cube should no oh, sorry in, in O of n cube should be this possible array, right? And this actually does a lot of important things for us. Um, first of all, here in order to check if this is valid, instead of doing this, we have to do if pos of x, y, this is the direction is starting there. And this can be uh, s1. Oh, sorry, possible. If this is impossible, we continue. And then here in this loop for S2, right? Uh, instead of doing this for loop, we do if possible of x. Ooh, sorry, this is possible of x, y. One minus starting there because we're taking the opposite kind of. So since we're at the second, we're past the second switch, we're taking the other kind of step, right? One minus starting dir, and then this is s two minus s one, right? Hello, why is this coloration weird? This is this is the most buggy thing, the coloration thing. Okay, now it's the right color, and then for three. Uh, instead of taking these steps, you do okay. So if not possible of x y starting, we're taking starting door steps again, and then we're taking s three minus s two steps. Continue. This next one is, let's just do, figure out where we'll be after this amount, right? X equals, um, geez, this is so rough. S2 minus S1, Y is equal to, we took S1 steps and we also took S3 minus S2. And then for here, X is equal to S1 plus S3 minus S2. And then Y is equal to S2 minus S1. 
So now we need to check if possible of x, y, uh, we're taking steps in the direction of one minus starting direct because it's our last leg. The way I'm calculating this, guys, is like, uh, so if we do three switches, we'll go from starting dir, one minus starting dir, starting dir, one minus starting dir, right? So this is starting dir, one minus, starting dir, one minus. So if you look at here, this is starting dir, one minus, starting dir, and then one minus, right? And then the last index would be two times n minus one, the total number of steps minus S3. No, no, this needs to be closed off. So notice that I'm only making this. This can go. I'm only making optimizations to this one because I think these the time for these are really small anyways. So it should be fine. We know these are working. So let's just kind of like only fix what we need to fix. Let's test this again because again every time I make some changes, you can add new bugs to it. Uh, we'll run and there we go. Hello. Oh, here, yeah, okay. Work as well as I planned. Okay, so we'll run this again. Okay. One here. Okay, out of bounds for three, line three. Where is this? Line 26. Line 26 is up here, isn't it? Huh, where's the impossibility? Oh, this should be SX, SY. Yeah. Okay. Did I not save it? Oh, 910, what? Jeez, this is getting so out of hand. S Y starting there S one. What is the index out of bounds for? Oh, so this here, right here, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's fair. So S1 can only be up to N, and the reason why is because, like, what I'll do here is I'll just, here, we'll keep this. Here we'll just do, uh, this will be a size times N minus one. Right, that should make people happy. And then for here, then times n minus one. Yeah, okay. That should make people happy. Here we go. Six, okay, that looks good. Uh, we gotta just run this suite again to see if all these work. Six zero zero four two looks right. Okay, and we'll submit it because I really don't feel like trying to come up with custom cases to debug this for. And then we'll cross our fingers and we'll pray because that's where we're at right now. I think so. For these contests, Java is a little bit finicky. Sometimes we'll have problems where the solution for Java doesn't work. The solution for C plus plus doesn't work for Java just because Java is a slower language. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully we're doing okay. It looks like we're doing a lot faster, which is good. Um, please. Yes, okay, we're like on the cusp of it. Come on. One more, I think, right? Please, oh, thank God, okay. So yeah, we've finished this contest. We've submitted everything. I think we're good. There's nothing else I have to do now. And yeah, that's the solve for this contest. Bronze one is really hard. Um, A lot harder than when I took it, obviously. The thing is, the reason it's tricky is because like, 
for uh, like problem three for example, that was going to give you the most trouble, right? So for problem three, I actually there's a easier solution to code in that uses like concepts from like gold and silver. So I couldn't use it for the bronze contest. So I had to do this brute force solution that was kind of like finicky in terms of runtime. Like it was really close to the runtime that um like of the max runtime. So yeah, I guess like strongly advise people starting Yusaku to learn C++, it's a faster language and like you get a little bit of a boost. So C++, the time limit is two, two seconds. I think for Java, it's four seconds, but oftentimes um, it's a lot better to use C++ because that time boost is really necessary. I used a lot of cool like optimizations for problem three. Hopefully, you know, if you use a better language, you don't need to, but um, yeah, I like, like I, I think I kind of had to. So um, that's that contest. Um, so yeah, let me. Uh, hopefully, you guys learned a lot. Sorry for like the weird debugging towards the end. A lot of that was like out of scope for the class. Um, but maybe I don't know. Hope maybe that's the intended solution. Uh, it might be, but yeah. Uh, the idea of the problems is the important part, though. So hopefully that works well. So yeah, I'm gonna see you guys in the next recording. Maybe if you guys want to look at the silver one or. Yeah, I uh, hope you guys did well in this contest. It seemed really hard this year. So um, I don't know, but I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.